Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our third installment of our Wow Wednesday series. I'm Greg Bernard, class of 2004 and director of alumni relations. To provide a little background, this series was created to highlight some of our amazing alumni doing tremendous things in their personal and professional lives. In addition to highlighting our alums, a key component of this program is connecting them with faculty or staff members who had an impact on them while they were students and played an integral part in their trajectory. Today's alumnus of note is STEMness, Dr. Jacqueline Garifano, class of 2006, a pioneer and champion for girls and women in STEM. In addition to our other terrific faculty and student panelists, who our moderator will introduce later in the program. Before we, before we begin, I wanted to go over a few guidelines. In order to avoid any potential audio or visual issues or interruptions to the program, all participants will be muted upon entry, and we ask that you remain muted throughout the conversation, both your audio and your video. Also to ask questions, we're asking that participants utilize the chat feature to communicate with us, which will be monitored throughout and shared during the Q&A segment. We'll take about 10 seconds to give everyone an opportunity to ensure that you are muted as well as your video turned off. Without further ado, I present to you our moderator and MC for today's program, Dr. Christine Broadbridge, Professor and Executive Director of Research and Innovation. Good afternoon. I join you on Southern's campus. You see our brand new science building um, behind me. I'm thrilled to moderate a topic on a, a topic that I'm so passionate about. Uh, my name is Christine Broadbridge. I'm a professor of physics and executive director of research and innovation at Southern. I'm also currently the president of the Connecticut Academy of Science and Engineering, or CASE. My background is engineering and physics, but from the start of my career, I've worked toward implementing programs for the purpose of enhancing and recruiting the retention of underrepresented groups in STEM. And mentorship has been a key element of that from the beginning that we'll talk about today. I started my career at Trinity College in Hartford, and at Trinity, I founded what was called the United Technologies Trinity College Engineering Initiative. It was a program designed to enhance the representation of women and underrepresented minorities in engineering and science. It was based on a partnership at the time between Trinity, Hartford Public Schools, and UTC. I arrived in New Haven in early 2000s, quite a while ago, and I joined the physics faculty at Southern. Um, Southern was the perfect fit for me, um, both in terms of its location, I love New Haven, as well as Southern's priority for hiring faculty that love to teach, care deeply about student success, and that are strong researchers. I have been fortunate over my career to serve as a PI on a number of grant-funded programs. I participated in the establishment of a National Science Foundation-funded center for research excellence at Yale and Southern, that you'll hear a little bit more about later in, in our talk. It's called CRISP, or the Center for Research on Interface Structures and Phenomenon. That's where Jackie and I worked most closely to start. As a result of CRISP, we have since also established at Southern the Connecticut State Colleges and University Center for Nanotechnology, as well as Southern's Office for STEM Innovation and Leadership, or STEM-IL. It is with great pleasure that I now introduce Jacqueline Jackie Garifano. I first met Jackie in 2002 when she approached me as a first year student to undertake research in my lab. Now mind you, at the time, research experiences for our undergraduates, now we call them REUs, were very uncommon, and especially for a first year student. So from the start, I knew that Jackie was special. My instincts were exactly on track as Jackie received her bachelor's degree with honors in physics and minors in chemistry and math from Southern in 2006. Jackie's significant role in STEM advocacy started almost immediately with her leadership role in Southern's very strong chapter of the Society of Physics Students. 
As chapter president, Jackie spearheaded numerous successful events and dedicated much of her time to public outreach. Upon her graduation from Southern, Jackie enrolled in a graduate program at University of Connecticut, and immediately she started again. She started her role as a STEM advocate in establishing a Materials Research Society chapter at UConn, the first ever chapter for this international organization. In 2009, she received her master's degree in material science and engineering from UConn. Also in 2009, Jackie was appointed the Education and Outreach Coordinator for CRIS, again, that center that I mentioned that was National Science Foundation funded. And as that coordinator, she continued on with her graduate work and completed her doctoral degree from University of Connecticut. Ultimately, CRISP impacted thousands of students, both through direct outreach and via impact on, their, on teachers. In 2011, Jackie was recruited to United Technologies Research Center as a science, senior research scientist upon completing her doctorate degree. She still found time and joined CRISP again as the outreach coordinator for our REU programs. Jackie and I remained in close contact and and she continued to expand her advocacy role in numerous um, opportunities, including Special Olympics annual events, as well as United Way campaign. She also acted as a volunteer for STEM events, including Skills 21 Expo, Science Fairs, and many others. The stars were soon to align as Jackie earned a promotion to her current role as the Margaret Ingalls Engineering Program at um, Raytheon Technologies. Jackie's additional awards, accomplishments, and accolades are many. Just as a few examples, she is named Women of Innovation twice by the Connecticut Technology Council, both at Collegium in 2011 and Large Business in 2000 for innovation and leadership. I know no one else who has achieved this. She's a, a Connecticut native and serves on the board of directors for the Connecticut State University Foundation, her alma mater, as you know, and Girl Scouts of Connecticut. So with that, I introduce Jackie Garifano. Thank you, Christy. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. So looking forward to this conversation, Jackie. Me too. As I mentioned, uh, you were one of my first REU students in my research mm -hmm. group. Um, mm -hmm. And that was way back when we were first with establishing the Chris Nano Characterization Facility at Southern. Um, so, Jackie, could you tell us about your experience in Southern and how that really impacted your personal and professional journey? Absolutely. So first, I'd just like to take a moment and uh, say thank you to Greg and the Alumni Association for giving me this opportunity and to really give reflection upon my journey, which it, it's been half of my life, right? I've known Christine for 18 years. 18 years ago, I was stepping a foot Southern campus as an aspiring astronaut, wanted to study uh, astrophysics. And Christine guided me in a different direction on the complete opposite size scale of the spectrum, right? The cosmos versus micro and nano materials. And so I see many familiar faces, uh, names uh, on the participants. So thank you so much to everyone who's supporting me and tuning in for this really dynamic conversation. Uh, if any of you follow me on social media, you know how much of an advocate I am for women in STEM representation and just really being a STEMinist. And so I wouldn't be here today in who, sitting in this space unless it was Christine and meeting her. And, um, you know, just venturing into something that I had no idea about. Right? I didn't know what materials science and engineering was. I didn't know what Christine did. But what I did know is she was the woman in the STEM field. And by the way, STEM wasn't even, it wasn't even on my radar, right? I came up through public education, uh, just very core science curriculum, physics, biochemistry, STEM wasn't even on my radar. And it's because of working with Christine Saying, jumping into an opportunity to really get my hands onto experimental work and finding a love of science and hands-on experimentation, really that she, you, and, and that experience was the catalyst that set me on my path. 
And certainly I'm not the same young woman that I was 18 years ago. I've grown and it's been a complete journey of really empowerment and giving back to the mentorship that Christine had showed to me. And so it's really important in the platform that I have in being a scientist and becoming an engineer in grad school. That was a whole thing, right? Because as a physicist, you're learning one dialect of a language and then you go and venture into engineering and it's the other side, right? Um, so that there's always been challenges and adversity, but I, I feel empowered in the place that I am now and being able to live vicariously through my associates of our leadership development program for engineering. And I see a couple names there. So thank you for supporting me. So yeah, Southern, as you see Christine's beautiful background, that building did not exist when I was a student. So we really started from bare bones of a materials research characterization facility and being a part of that experience and building what Christine has done for the university has been so critical in, in my journey. So I just, I'm just filled with gratitude today. So thank you. Thank you, Jackie. And, and I have to say your accolades and accomplishments speak for themselves. Um, Jackie kind of had me, um, I actually shortened them a lot, I will tell you. <laughs> you want me to, to go into all of those. Um, so we're extremely proud of you. And, and you know, one of the things I'm so proud about and excited for you and I want for all of my students is that you found a career that really is at the intersection of your passion, right? It really brings in your passion. Can you speak a little bit more about that position at Raytheon Technologies, so, you know, that position as a program manager? Right. So I spent seven years at the research center as a research scientist, being an individual technical contributor, supporting our business in the aerospace and building industries. So a very diverse and dynamic portfolio being exposed to products and technologies on the job training was absolutely real because what I was doing for my uh, master's and dissertation research was not really anything what I was experiencing on the job. And so that was a really um, interesting and fun and dynamic experience. But for me, my passion has always been to leave an impact and create a legacy for others, bringing others along, basically being what Chris, who Christine was for me, for other people. And when we, as uh, United Technologies, decided to establish this prestigious leadership development program for top entry level talent, so folks that are uh, students that are graduating with bachelor's degrees in engineering fields to come into our business. I read that job description and I said, I need to do this. This is what I've, I've been made for. This is what, where my passion lies. And so again, now flipping, right? Turning a page and not doing anything technical. I have a technical engineering PhD and now I'm in program management. But for me, that's really what I strive to do is to become a people leader and to really just cultivate and foster and develop and mentor our next generation. So for me, I, I, I have the best job ever. <laughs> I, I love it. And so I now know what Christine and other faculty at the university get to feel like because they made an impact and their legacy is through their students and where they go in their careers. And I have to say, Jackie, it just makes me so happy. I mean, that's what my job is about. And I say it's my dream for my students to find that. So, um, so my next question, I, you know, you, you are a self-proclaimed feminist and, and obviously so passionate about mentorship. So um, can you share with us what it really means to you, um, you know, and why you feel that mentorship is so important? Yeah. So I've coined, I've stolen shamelessly, right? I didn't come up with the term steminist, but I fully believe that and I, I live it. And so, um, you know, as a woman who is fiercely an advocate for creating more opportunities and representation for women in science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM. So many people are familiar with the term feminist. Well, we're blending the two, right? That intersectionality between, um, you know, two worlds colliding. And, you know, especially being a woman that has come up through a technology organization um, on a technical track, you know, and, and quite frankly, being a white woman, right? I know that I 
there's not many of us, but there's even less of uh, women and people of color. And so for me, really having that opportunity to bring others along, shine light on what they're doing and empower individuals and organizations to really, you know, continue to move the needle. We've made certain strides and certainly the experiences that Christine and others have had who've come before me, you know, you had this, you know, experience of really carving, paving the way, right? Blazing that trail. And here I am coming up behind and I just, I want to be able to do the same thing. And so looking at, you know, metrics, women make up at half, at least maybe even a smidge more of our labor workforce. But within STEM, we're still barely at, you know, 25%. And for me, that, I don't accept that. <laughs> and if we think about it, right, as far as uh, diversity and equity and inclusivity, it's not where, where we should be. And so I want to be able to really just empower and serve as a mentor and be that cheerleader and give young women and girls and basically anyone, you know, just the empowerment to say, you can absolutely do this um, because diversity of thought is important, diversity of experiences. And, um, you know, we are certainly moving the needle as a global uh, workforce here in the States but we could always do better. And so for me, again, I, I love to be connected with people. I love to be able to serve as that mentor and really just like have mutual empowerment, I think, because a lot of my journey has, you know, kind of been sometimes at periods, right? There's blips of this imposter syndrome that creeps in or I'm not good enough, what am I doing? Where am I going? You're looking up at a matrix organization and you're like, there's not many of us, so where's the space for me? So for me, I wanna carve out that space for myself and for others. And so, you know, using the hashtag feminist and hashtag see her be her is real because rep representation absolutely matters. Excellent, and you know, I didn't even mention it, but you were just now being recognized by the, um, the Pettit Family Foundation, and that's for leadership. And a big part of that is your role as a mentor now. So that makes me excited. You know, really, the tables have turned now, and now you have a great. So can you speak a little bit about your experience now that as a mentor yourself, right? And um, how that feels to be, you know, to be doing that. I think it feels incredible, right? And as I've been going through this journey of you know, ha having been mentored and then now being a mentor, especially with my associates of the leadership program. Peer mentoring is something that is so valuable. And so even though I'm one generation of, like before them, they are our new workforce generation. They are our future. And so they've come up through, you know, experiences that are unlike what I've had. So yes, there's shared experiences, but there's uh, differences and uniqueness. And they are just incredible people. So not only in my day-to-day -day job do I get to really just uh, absorb and, and learn from and help to cultivate their growth and development from my associates, but then also I try to find other ways within the community with on even just virtual networking, digital, social media, love social media, um, and just trying to find opportunities to connect with, with students or with young people. Um, because it's a matter of, you know, as women, period, we have imposter syndrome, we know that, and it's especially prevalent within probably more so the tech and STEM industry, which is predominantly male. Um, sometimes you use the phrase pale male stale and that just doesn't sit well. So this is why we are, you know, carving out space, blazing our trail and, um, you know, just really trying to find opportunities to, you know, become visible and be an ally, advocate for those of us that are not really seen because anyone can do anything that they set their mind to, right? I mean, I didn't know where I was going to end up, right? I thought I was going to be on a space station somewhere, right? Like I wanted to work for NASA and here I am, right? I've gone through my journey of being a research scientist and an engineer and now a program leader. So, uh, you know, as much as 2020 has been of great challenge, I'm just very grateful that 
the work that I've put in to creating myself, my brand, my, you know, my legacy uh, has been acknowledged by some of, uh, you know, locally here in Connecticut with the Pettit Family Foundation from the Connecticut Science Center, as well as Connecticut um, Women of Innovation, which was on my bucket list, which I'm so thrilled to be a finalist this year. And then also nationally with um, the Society of Women Engineers. So re the re one of the recipients of the Spark Award, which is based in mentorship. And so I'm just really grateful that I've been able to have an impact on young women, aspiring, you know, technologists, engineers, and, um, you know, to just kind of keep keep that momentum of empowerment going. Excellent. And I, you know, and I was so excited to see that you most recently joined um, the Girl Scouts too. So the board mm -hmm. for the Girl Scouts are really thinking now about early and also how STEM can be, can really permeate, right? So it's Absolutely. not just about everyone becoming a scientist, but that idea of really STEM for all, right? All of society and, and STEM literacy. Um, yeah. So, so, so what advice would you offer women either interested in STEM fields or currently studying STEM? You know, if you, if you could go back, what were the things that you wish you had known? Um, so thinking about it, and again, acknowledging that who I am today is not who I was as an undergrad student on the campus of Southern, right? Even though I was, um, you know, doing things as, you know, stepping up to, to lead the, you know, the physics club and, and be involved in educational outreach, I didn't exactly have such a, um, you know, such a, a, a firm network. And so I offer that to, to anyone. And so that's why mentorship is so important, right? It could be just like this one time, like spark of a catalyst to really change someone's trajectory. Or it could be more longstanding, of course, like how you and I have known each other for almost 20, 20 years. So, um, you know, that's, something. Um, but I recently tuned into a women's leadership panel and one of the uh, thought leaders had shared four C's. And so I'm adding a fifth and I want to offer that to our participants. So have confidence. Imposter syndrome, I've spoken about that, is real. Do not stay in that space for too long. Competence, having the ability to do something successfully. So being competent is important. Capital, which is your brand, how you show up. And so again, I, I speak to social media and me, you know, being an advocate for women in STEM, not only as a technologist and a leader within Raytheon Technologies, but also just as a woman at large, right? And I, I love being able to, you know, work and elevate my brand, especially in this time of, of celebration with the acknowledgements. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Charisma. So of course, charm and likability is important. And when I think of that, it's more so authenticity because being your authentic self, I think is absolutely important. And then the fifth one that I'm adding to is connection. So for that, it's finding your people. Your people as you're going through your academic career, your life, family, friends, your tribe, who are those people that are going to appreciate you, empower you, challenge you. But then on the flip side of that, again, is building your network. So the connection that you have beyond the four walls of your bedroom, your classroom, you know, being connected with people and growing your network will serve you well. And I offer this as an example. I didn't necessarily know that I wanted to go to graduate school until working as a research scientist with Christine in the lab and working among, you know, graduate students and postdocs at Yale University. As a freshman and sophomore working on a big giant microscope looking at really small things, I mean, I had such a unique experience and opportunity that that drove me to want to pursue a graduate degree because I had Christine as this superhero woman that I was looking up to and I was like, I can do that. I could get to that next level, right? As a, also a type A, overachiever you know you go through college and you're like okay I can keep going I really enjoyed research and that's where I, I ended up and so with that I am a Connecticut native right so I was at Southern in the Honors College studying physics and then I because of Christine and her connection of within my, microscopy and materials characterization 
Uh, she knew my, my would-be advisor, Mark Andow, who was a renowned microscopist as well. And so because of that connection, I've had quite a fluid transition from my academic, well, within my academic career, and then to my professional career, because again, the world is quite small and knowing people within this space of technology and engineering, that's how I became a research scientist at UTC. And so now that, you know, again, trying to leverage your capital, your social capital, who you are, I would encourage undergraduate students, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, please create one because recruiters and your future employers will look to that to see who you are. So yes, resumes and CVs are still important, but having your own digital brand and building that and creating that digital network of connections will absolutely serve you well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that, Jackie. And I, and I would say that collaboration is partnership because I yes. think throughout my career, really, um, we're all in this together. And I think people understanding it, um, that really bringing all the folks to the table for STEM is really about our future. So for me, it's been academic and industry partnerships as well. So yeah. working really closely across institutions, I've worked with all of the academic institutions mm -hmm. in the state and industries like you know, Raytheon, um, UTC really get it. And I think that they do. And, uh, and I'm really excited to see that. Um, so in terms of excitement, uh, my other question now is to where do you see the exciting things going into the future for technology and engineering in particular? What, what excites you about that, those fields? So again, I am no longer a technical contributor. I live vicariously through my leadership program associates of Margaret Ingalls program that are really working on a, across our aerospace and defense industry in really incredible products technologies. And so I, I get excited when I get to see the evolution of technology just you know, as a consumer, right? So how smartphones and smart devices have come up and through and how we're now connected uh, to a greater extent, right? And then especially with the way that COVID has impacted our world, being virtual and digital, um, we're able to do that because of technology. So when I think of what's exciting to me, I look to who comes behind me, who's coming up, right? And for me, that's my associates, that is young people that really just are going to hopefully take charge of our country, of our world, of our uh, advancement of technology, because they have such strong emotional intelligence. They're just, you know, they have a different lens because of how they've come up through their own lives. And so for me, I'm excited about the change that they will be able to impart. And especially regarding women in STEM, you know, hopefully them moving the needle, right? As we sort of provide more color for uh, our, our industry and our global workforce. So, you know, as a, as a scientist, right? As an engineer, you're always thinking about numbers, but for me, it's more the impact. So let's get that number to 30, 40, 50%. There's no reason why. Um, so what excites me is more of like the what's to come. But I know for you, Christine, you're more excited because you're really immersed in a lot of that, you know, exciting technology and manufacturing that's coming up through Connecticut. Yes, and it, it's all connected. And I would say one big piece of this is just how interdisciplinary it is. So I think folks very often think of STEM as being somewhat siloed, but what I, you know, I think that more individuals would get involved in STEM if they realize just as you point out the impact that STEM had throughout society. So if we think of, um, and we'll talk more about this a little bit later about the Office of STEM Innovation Leadership, we really look at connecting STEM also to other areas of the university and to the community. Um, you know, such important topics as um, sustainability, and then to your point, um, you know, there are fields that in, in technology um, that are, I think data science is a really important one too that, that for students to really be thinking about. Um, so with that, Jackie, I am really excited now about the next part of our program. I think we're gonna hear about um, and hear from um, uh, another one of our faculty members at Southern as well as her students. So with that, I'm gonna hand things over to you, Jackie, so that you can invite um, and introduce um, are the members of our panel. Thanks. Thanks. So as part of how I show up in the world, 
and again, the emphasis on mentoring and um, you know, bringing others along. When I was asked to do this opportunity for the WOW Wednesday, I asked, my first thought was how can we um, bring exposure to the great work of current students, right? Because my journey started and ended, you know, 15 years ago, right? In that time frame. So uh, I'm so thrilled that the invitation to join us uh, was accepted. And so I'd love to be able to introduce you to uh, Can Dr. Candy Huang, who is the Associate Professor of Chemistry. She joined Southern uh, in the summer of 2018. And two of her students who will be able to tell you a little bit about their research and the impact that being mentored by Candy and, and others across the university has had on them. So with that, uh, Candy, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Jackie. Um, I, I really appreciated your conversation with Christine and so many things that you said reflected with my own personal journey. So for example, the women in STEM, I am a assistant professor in chemistry and I did my undergrad, I, I got a bachelor's in, of science in biology and a BA in chemistry and then I went on to get my PhD in chemistry and further postdoc research. And so I've taken many, many chemistry courses and throughout my entire career, I had one female faculty. Mm -hmm. The rest were male. Uh, all of my advisors were male. Um, at my PhD program, which was a very great program, there were three female faculty of 36 faculty members. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't really get to have a female mentor um, in my chemistry research just because it wasn't available. Um, so I, I was really inspired to try and offer that, um, try and continue with my career and, and be, <laughs> be a faculty member so that more women would have more women mentors because there's so many unique things about being female um, that only females understand. And so like, you know, mentorship in that regard is like very particular. Um, so I just wanted to say, I, I totally agreed with you. Um, a current stat is like 20% of, 20% um, of all faculty are, are female. So, so mm -hmm. there is, a, there is this, like slight adjustment. So what's happening is, it's about 50% when we're in our bachelor's program. It's, a, it's still 50% when we're in our PhDs. And then there's a decline to about a quarter uh, during postdocs and yeah. moving further on. So, um, I would love to increase the pipeline of women to be faculty members in STEM. I think it's wonderful. I love this job and I think that other people would really love it too. Um, and the, the last note I would say was the imposter syndrome is definitely something that everyone goes through, I think. And you know, eventually you just, um, it, it, uh, every once in a while, you're just like, oh, I'm here. I'm doing the job. I am the job. And, you know, we're, we're doing great work. So um, imposter syndrome is definitely, I really liked the five C's that you gave, you know, yeah. having confidence. We need to add a sixth one, though, with collaboration, thanks to Christine. So the ever-growing list, again, if there's any other C's out there, please drop them in the chat. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to also introduce two of my um, students. Um, I have loved mentoring and th this job has been so great, just being a faculty member, being able to teach chemistry and then do novel research on um, interesting things that, you know, you just want to look into just because you're curious. Um, and so one of my research students is Therese Zayax. She's majoring in chemistry with a biochemistry concentration. Um, she's also pursuing three minors as well in honors, psychology, and biology. So she's very interdisciplinary. Um, she's been in my research lab for two years, and she's currently working on synthesizing and testing the metabolic stability of novel compounds. Um, and we're interested in using these compounds to treat antibiotic resistant bacteria. Um, my other student is Minahel Gilani, and she's majoring in biology and ha has a chemistry minor, so she's also very interdisciplinary. Um, she is interested in that research that bridges biology and chemistry, which is great. I love that topic. Um, she's looking at how the position of functional groups on organic compounds impacts its reactivity during a reaction and how we can easily separate and purify these um, compounds using 
an automated flash chromatography system. So if you girls want to say hi. Hi, I'm Therese. Hello, I'm Manahu. Um, so I love the fact that we're able to, you know, offer this platform to have both Therese and Minahill just share some thoughts about, you know, what the research is that um, Candy had just mentioned and how Southern is starting to really form it, formulate and shape their career trajectory. So Therese, I'll start with you and then we'll turn it over to Minahill. Sure. So as Dr. Wong mentioned, I am entering my third year of research in the lab. So I've been a research student with her for two full years now, entering third. And I am exploring how compounds that we are synthesizing, which are beta-ketoesters and beta-ketoamides, can be synthesized and then also stabilized. So in the future, we could potentially use those to address a massive problem, which is antibiotic resistance. And so that is the phase of the project that I am working on. And the massive thing that I love about Southern is just the equal representation that I've seen and the equal access to opportunities. I was a transfer student, so I am a senior now, but I did spend my first semester of college at a different university. And right away, I knew that it was not the experience I wanted. Just a few weeks into the semester, I knew. And I had reached out to Dr. Jem in the Honors College because I am also a member of the Honors College. So when Jackie mentioned that, I was so happy to hear the Honors College. So I reached out to Dr. Jem and I said that I wanted to transfer to Southern because I had previously applied as a senior in high school. And from the moment I arrived at Southern, it was just a totally different arena. It was completely different and it was the experience that I knew that I wanted. And I started researching with Dr. Wong as a sophomore. And to be able to participate in research so early and being a fairly new student, it was only my second semester at Southern, was amazing to see, especially being a female and having a female mentor. It was really exciting for me. It's still exciting for me and seeing in our department how many female students there are not only just participating in research but also just pursuing career paths and participating in these courses and pursuing this degree is really amazing to see because I've always been extremely passionate about equal representation I remember being in high school we had a bunch of events and feminist events and from a young age I was always interested in how I could help other women pursue their interests the same way that I was going to pursue mine. And so now at Southern, obviously I've been participating in research, but I also started the Chemistry Honor Society. So I've reached out to some of my friends. We have been a club for officially a year now, about a year and a half since I first started it. And I reached out to some of my friends, most of them which actually were women in STEM, and I said, would you like to help me start this? And Dr. Wong is one of our advisors. She's our co-advisor. And so being a leader and being an advocate is something that I care deeply about because if I can even do my part in just a small way while I'm at Southern to set up success for other women long-term is really one of my goals. Well, you're absolutely crushing it. So thank you for your work. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and Minahil, let's hear about your journey so far. So um, my name's Minahil. I'm a biology major and a chemistry minor. And I met Dr. Wong as a sophomore and it was my first general chemistry uh, course. And I was so impressed by the, like, her lectures that I decided to have chemistry as my minors. And at first, the research seemed very intimidating, but as you guys mentioned, we all have imposter syndrome. But Dr. Wong kind of like, uh, like had more confidence in me than I had in myself, and she believed in me. And I started my research in the fall of 2019 with Dr. Wong and Therese. And at that time, I was taking my first organic chemistry course with the research. 
and it was really interesting because I was ahead of some students and learning a lot of new stuff at the same time while I was trying to grab those concepts. And if it wasn't for Dr. Wong being there for me, I don't think I would have ever been able to do that. Also, Therese, she was there for me. I, uh, she had had like more experience than me as a researcher at that time, but like um, she helped me throughout my um, st throughout this, that semester as a re uh, researcher. Also, I've been privileged to be a part of two undergrad re uh, summer research programs that are collaborated with ECIC to, uh, in a row. And I think I think I'm I'm I feel like I'm very privileged to experience all this because coming from a diverse background, and I moved here to the United States just four four years ago, and Southern was my first official institution. So the amount of experience I've had in the short amount of time is a lot for me, and I plan to continue. Um, and besides that. Uh, Dr. Wang already talked about my research. I started off with beta keto stratification reactions, but now we're more focused on just analyzing the patterns of the purification that we do on different analogs. And yeah, that's it. Very, very I, I took organic chemistry as an undergrad and I remember having my walls plastered with all of the structures and trying to just remember everything. So I, I know some keywords of what you both have shared uh, with us about your work, um, but it's so, so wonderful to hear you speak in such high regard of Southern. Um, I have been connected to the university even as I had uh, graduated and so I've seen the transformation of the university and the great work that um, Professor Juan and Broadridge are doing and among others is really just fantastic. So um, I think at this point we'll bring Christine back on. We're almost at uh, the quarter uh, to the hour. Um, so I haven't seen any uh, real questions coming through the chat but um, so certainly you're able to drop some uh, some chats in there if you, or questions in the chat if you have for any one of the five of us. Um, but I'll offer Christine the platform to be able to speak about what's to come for uh, students that are studying STEM. Sure, absolutely. And I think that I'll, I'll also um, have Candy jump in a bit as well. So I think that, you know, what I've learned over these many years is that these research opportunities are so important to students. Um, but I also hear it from employers. So I think, Jackie, you don't have to add another C. I think it's really about connection. It's really about that, that's what you mentioned. And I think that um, we continue to reach out. Southern does that, right? We're continually listening to employers. And they talk about that our graduates are ready. You know, they're ready when they, and they're, they're um, motivated, they're ready, they're, they're skilled. And part of that, I believe, is the hands-on research opportunity. So, we have um, established this Office of STEM Innovation and Leadership um, that I think I mentioned early on. And it was as the result of, um, as a number of grant funded initiatives in addition to CRISP that I mentioned, also an um, BioPATH, which is the Bioscience Academic and Career Pathway Initiative. So the two students here um, participated in some of those activities. And that's really about the bioscience companies getting together with Southern and in um, the city of New Haven and realizing that it's really about partnership to prepare the future workforce. And as I pointed out a little bit earlier, um, industry gets this, right? They get it, that we need a diverse workforce. It's the right thing to do, but it's also the essential thing for us to do to be competitive. And I think that, um, you know, I applaud the companies that are stepping forward with this. Um, it's part of Southern's mission. And I'm so thrilled to be part of, you know, really um, transforming, you know, the transformation that's happened at Southern, uh, again, with the beautiful science building that we have. <laughs> and also, I think that just the students that we work with. So I mentioned the Office of STEM Innovation and Leadership. Um, one of the students mentioned ECIC. So that's a program that's funded by CT Next. It's a state funded program. And it's one that funds students to do, again, research. In this case, it's related to bioscience. Um, so that's a program that I encourage students to learn more about. 
Um, and so what we're doing is those students that have gone through that program, they develop that LinkedIn profile, Jackie, that you talked about, and you even came and talked to the students to help them to do that. So they're connected in. And then our bioscience companies, other companies know where to go and look for those students that have had those experiences. Um, the other thing that I'm very excited to, to really talk about is, you know, really the interdisciplinary connections between the STEM fields and the impact that STEM has. And I think I mentioned this early on, and I want to kind of talk to some of the other um, panelists about this, because I feel as though that's a real driver for people, you know, particularly those from underrepresented groups who might not consider STEM, you know, really understanding the impact that STEM has on society. So if, if I could have, you know, any one of our panelists um, speak a little bit about the importance it is for you to think about how your research impacts, you know, the impact of that research. Can you talk about that and, and whether that's a driver for you? Sure, so I could go first. Sure. I definitely, especially with everything that's been occurring due to the pandemic, feel that research is so incredibly relevant. And with a topic that I'm investigating, just thinking about the long-term goal that we're trying to achieve is really amazing because obviously as I've been preparing my honors thesis and investigating and reading the literature about antibiotic resistance, it's such a rising threat that I feel that not many people know about. And because I'm contributing in some capacity, it's a really wonderful feeling. And it's also, it just shows how important STEM is because especially I actually took pharmacology with Dr. Wong last year. And that course totally just changed all of my perceptions regarding just drug discovery and the way that that process kind of works and how drugs are distributed and how they actually function in the body. I had never heard of anything regarding that field before until I took pharmacology. And that class really opened my eyes too to seeing how important every area of STEM is to keep society functioning. And I think that's why every time I see, I attend a poster session or we present a research, it's really exciting to see what everyone is working on and thinking about the long-term goals of those projects. Right, and I think that people very often understand what physicians do, right? That's a STEM field, but not really understanding just how much of an impact you know, STEM has on just even the medical profession, right? So I think if, um, Dr. Huang, if you can speak to that a bit, uh, you know, really about how we're working at Southern to get that word out about with Biopath and other initiatives. Right. I think the one of, one advice that I would advocate to students is to look for opportunities. You know, just look and try and apply for whatever you can, whatever fellowship. Both of my um, mentees have gotten uh, have been recipients of multiple awards, including an undergraduate research grant. Um, but we try and circulate this information out to the students as possible, but also just look for opportunities. You know, it doesn't have to just be related to Southern, but look for REUs, look for fellowships, and look for different internships, things that interest you, and just apply. You know, the, the worst you can do is not apply, right? If you apply and you don't get it, that's okay. Like, you're getting practice and you have that application that you can use moving forward. You can keep progressing and just keep trying until you get fellowships or awards or, you know, different programs. And I think that's really a great way to, like, help understand what makes you interested, what makes you passionate, and Getting more so involved I see a in question in the programs. chat that says, getting females involved is difficult. However, encouraging young women of color is even more daunting. What resources and or individuals are committed to promoting STEM fields? So I, I would say that just some that I would speak about, Jackie mentioned the Society of Women Engineers. Awesome organization. There's a National Society of Black Engineers that I've, I've, been, you know, I've engaged with as well. Um, Jackie is, I think, on the board now for the Girl Scouts. I know they have a new um, a real initiative towards STEM as well. I don't know, Jackie, if you can speak to that or other organizations um, that are out there to support. Yeah, so for Girl Scouts of Connecticut in particular, they are trying to really, um, you know, gain more uh, membership and or opportunities and access, right? We've talked about that to young girls of color and the Latinx community. And so again, busting stereotypes of what 
is an engineer? What is a technologist? Um, and one theme that I think is important is that even if it's not, you know, Google is a powerful tool, right? You could Google and uh, Google scholarships, Google organizations, Google how do I? And also I offer that you have five women here that are, you know, in various different uh, parts of their own journey, academically or professionally, that have connections that they can share with you. And so anytime that I'm in front of people, I say, connect with me on LinkedIn, leverage my network, how can I help you, right? Because of these organizations and being in the professional realm within STEM, you're able to then say, I can't help you, but I know that Candy can, or she has you know, access to this organization, or she knows of whatever. Um, and again, social media is really a powerful tool, uh, especially as universities, organizations, and industries are trying to really um, move the needle and get access and provide opportunities to bust out that pale male stale stereotype that um, has existed for so long. So yes, absolutely, there are organizations both locally at your university, within your community, within your workplaces, but just asking the question and going for it, being bold, um, because if not you, then it's gonna be someone else and it should be you. <laughs> and I think to answer that question too, it's as early as possible. Um, and I think that as we know, kindergarten, kids are excited already about STEM, right? Somehow we stomped that out. So one of the things that I didn't mention about Southern that also excites me about Southern is just really that we're the largest um, educator of, of teachers in the state. And so for me, it's about also um, professional development for teachers and finding ways that we can now teach STEM, you know, in a different way. So that was part of me, you know, I didn't talk obviously so many years ago about when I was a high school student, but I just think back to the way physics was taught even back then. I mean, I don't know how I ever became a physicist. It was terrible, right? So if we can find ways to get to those teachers where they can teach in a different way, um, and they can also bring, I think, um, back to it, interdisciplinary, bring in the impact of STEM into the classroom, then more people are gonna be thinking about it as a field. So I think educator professional development. Um, do any of the other panelists wanna um, tackle the question from the chat about resources um, that they think are out there or things that might be useful? I think mentorship is one of the biggest pieces that you need. You need um, a mentor that'll help you, especially a female mentor. I think that really helps you in your career trajectory. There, um, I was the recipient of an NSF uh, GRFP grant, uh, which is a national National Science Foundation grant that um, goes out to about 2,000 graduate students every year, um, and it's one of the biggest sources of funding for the NSF to support the broader education of basic science and um, graduate students in STEM. And when I received that grant, which was a big deal to me, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling less of an imposter. I did hear from some people that I only got it because I was a woman and because women are underrepresented in science. And having a female mentor and other older graduate students being like, no, that's stupid. That's, you know, they're just, they're just talking out of, you know, they're, they don't really know what they're talking about. It's based on your caliber as um as a scientist and etc and i think that really helped me um you know because what a what a sad thing to like try and detract from someone's success you know we want to like uplift everyone right we're not trying to bring anyone down we want to just like make more women excited about science and stem and i think that having a mentor a really good mentor um can can be a great avenue for helping you and encouraging you to succeed. I um, uh, just, you're, you can find them through many sources. They can be through your faculty members. They can be older students in the same school that you're in. They can be industry, um, people in industry. Um, just, I would advocate, find a mentor. Yeah, and I think that, that's back to Jackie C of that connection. Right, so those that are on this webinar, if you can think about if you're further in your career being a mentor you know, to students, um, and then if you're young, I think do it yourself as well. I know I've talked to both of the students on this call and mm -hmm. that they're excited about doing outreach. I think you're already asking about that, which so excites me. 
because I think that, um, as, as Dr. Huang just mentioned, I think it's a generation thing. So for you to be out there talking to younger children and, you know, about your, you know, how much you love what you do. Again, that's the thing I think that people need to understand is just really how fulfilling um, it is to be involved and engaged in STEM, um, how you can make a difference in society, but yet also how much it can really, um, it can really be rewarding. Um, so I think are there are other, other closing remarks I think that folks want to make in terms of just, again, the overall topic of mentorship, STEM, and then just, um, Jackie, if there's some, you know, kind of parting words you want to uh, make as well um, on your role, that would be great. So any, any conclusion remarks or, and again, questions from the, um, from those in the chat too, please feel free. So with four minutes left until the top of the hour, I will just maybe offer a closing statement and thank the four of you for joining me in this conversation and especially Christine and uh, Greg Bernard at the Alumni Association for being open to flipping the script, if you will, on a, the previous WOW session for allowing us to, that, to provide an opportunity to bring in others into this conversation. And so I feel like that's so important and so meaningful and i've gotten so much out of listening to each of you uh, share a little bit about your own journey and so with that i will put in a, a shameless plug for if you need a mentor if you if anything that i any one of us has uh, said resonated with you please do reach out linkedin is a powerful tool and we can certainly continue this conversation online. I know that Christine has many uh, aspiring, uh, you know, commitments coming up for Southern students in the, in the springtime. So something to really, um, you know, connect us all together, but also continue the work, continue the conversation. And so, um, you know, with that, I'll just say again, Thank you so much to, for, uh, to Christine for joining me in this conversation and uh, to our three other amazing women in STEM. So. And I'll thank you, Jackie. And I will shamelessly say that we have a LinkedIn page for the Office of STEM Innovation Leadership. So check it out. It's a brand new page. Connect in for those students and others that are there. Let's, let's break, build those connections. Um, so thank, I'll thank Greg and, and others on the call as well. And, and all of you that joined us. This, this was really a great conversation. Thank you. So really quickly, um, I wanted to share um, my thanks for all of you for bringing your, your, your t sharing your time, uh, your talent, your experience, and your perspective to this amazing program and this platform that we're continuing to build. And I wanted to also provide just a quick preview to um, everyone that later on in the year, these will be some of the um, panelists that will be joining us, um, obviously taking into consideration diversity, equity, inclusivity, but also the interesting journey that many people um, have gone on. Um, Dr. Aaron Johnson is a former athlete, a basketball player here who holds many records, but he is one of the few men of color who have gone on to pursue a doctorate degree and he has a doctorate in African-American history from St. John's University. So he'll be joining us in the spring during Black History Month. Uh, Frances Cordova is a social worker, but she also is a Latina, quote unquote, plus sized model. And she's had the opportunity to travel all over the world. And she actually wrote a book, Model 101, for women who wanted to transition and learn the ins and outs of the industry. So Francis will be joining us um, shortly. She also participated in our virtual concert. Um, so she's a woman of many talents. Um, and last but not least, Patrick Morrison, class of 87, is an immigrant student who was an athlete here who also became a professional athlete in the NFL and went on to do great things in a corporate space. So that's kind of a preview of what's to come for the year. Um, be on the lookout for those things and those opportunities as we um, continue to build this program and provide opportunities for our alumni to share some of their experiences and reconnect with us in a meaningful way. So thank you all again for joining us. Um, I hope you enjoyed the conversation. As Jackie and others alluded to, please connect um, via social media and other, other ways that we can connect and bridge that gap. 
and hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone. Bye-bye.